Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, TechSmith's HR Toolbox. My name is Jason Vallad, and I'm an instructional designer and master trainer here at TechSmith, and I'm pleased to be your co-host and presenter today, but we have another co-host and another presenter in the form of Ms. Amy Cassiati. Amy, how are we doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks, Jason. Excited to be here. Uh, we're excited to have you here. So Amy is the vice president of the human resources department at TechSmith. Yes, the actual vice president. Yes, the actual HR department. So we're here to talk about how TechSmith's HR department uses our tools and others to help effectively communicate with us, TechSmithies, as we affectionately call ourselves. So we're going to get ourselves into the webinar here in a second, but there's a couple of pieces of housekeeping that we want to go over first. First, let's start with today's agenda. So human resources, busier than ever. Uh, Amy and her entire team, and we're going to talk about that here in just a second, are here to talk about uh, the ways that they use our products, TechSmith products, to be more effective, efficient, and to show their humanity, which is a big thing that we want to talk about today, conveying that people in HR are humans, because that's part of the name of it, right? We're going to first talk about documenting a process for training using Snagit and Snagit Video and how to use that. And then we're going to talk about a second thing, which is communicating a policy change. And these are actual things that happen at TechSmith using Camtasia and Audiate together. So you're getting three products in one webinar. And then we'll talk about how we've used those and definitely take some time throughout the session to answer questions that come up and maybe hold a few for the end as well. The number one question, Amy, we get asked in every webinar is, hey, is this being recorded? Yep, this webinar is absolutely being recorded. And you will get a link to this webinar's recording in about 24 hours. It'll come to the same email address that you use to register for the session. You can watch it as many times as you want. You can share it with colleagues, send it to people that may have had not, not had an opportunity to sign up or someone who might find this information valuable. Be sure you share it widely. We're happy to do that. In this particular one, you'll also get a link on that webinar page to a really helpful document that we're going to reference a few times here. It's an actual study that was done by our team here at TechSmith. So let's talk about our team at TechSmith. If you have questions that you wanna get answered today, whether it's about the policy or procedure that Amy's talking about or the technical know-how of how we're gonna use the tools, there is a Q&A section at the bottom of the Zoom webinar interface. If you hope to get your question answered, please put it in the Q&A section. We can't promise we'll get to all of your questions, but that's gonna give you the best opportunity to get them answered because aside from Amy and myself, we have other TechSmith pieces with us helping. We have Brianna, we have Carson, we have Emmy, we have Jill, we have Caitlin, we have Luke, and we have Robert, all here ready to help you out. And these are all TechSmithies with the overwhelming majority of them being part of the actual HR department. Carson's with me on the customer education and Robert's one of our lead technical support agents. So you've got some wealth of information at your hands. Please use it um, to the best of your ability. Uh, we also have live transcription turned on. So if you would find it helpful to have closed captions that are live transcribed as we're here in the session, you can toggle those on with the closed caption button at the bottom. Uh, it's pretty good. Zoom does a pretty good job of doing this live. So if you find that helpful, go ahead and toggle that on. Uh, last but not least, the chat is also open. And I appreciate everybody letting us know they could hear us and see us and let us know when they're coming in from. There's some people right down the road from us in Wisconsin. We're located in Michigan. In fact, all of us in this webinar are in little various places around Michigan and Southwest Michigan. I don't Southeast Michigan. I don't know who's down there. Anyway, we're all in different places as well. So the opportunity for us to be able to help you out is there as well. Chatter in the chat, questions in the Q&A. All right. And that's a preview of what we're going to talk about a little bit later. But at this point, Amy, what I'm going to do is drop out of our Zoom and get into the conversation that we're going to have with the attendees and then how we're going to share that information that you're sharing uh, throughout the session. So let's start with uh, communicating a, no, we're going to start with documenting a process. So go ahead and take it away. Amy. So I'm sure I don't have to tell anyone that's attending this webinar that HR is busier than ever. We're all trying to do more with less. And we all have a ton of technology that we're working with, that our employees are working with. And our HR team here at TechSmith uses our products to help us be more efficient and effective. But we also show it to show use it to show a little bit of our personality so that our staff remembers we're people too. We live by all the policies, benefits, things that we're sharing. And again, just to show a little humility. So here at TechSmith, we actually built a new headquarters that we just moved into in October. And as part of that, 
we have always had flexible work policies for staff, but we really put together a flexible work benefit. And as part of that, we try to offer as much flexibility as we can around remote work, work location, work schedule. But we do still see value in in-person face-to-face time. And we see that in supporting around coaching, collaboration, and celebration. Now, we don't require our staff to be in the office every day, but do we do require some in office time. And as part of that, that means we have people coming and going in the building all the time, and we kind of need a way to keep track of that. So our employees know who's in the office and where they might find them, but also so HR and logistics know who's in the office on any given day, just in case some kind of situation or emergency comes up that we know who we need to be concerned about in the building. So one of the things that we did is actually look at Zoom um, work reservations as the way to schedule an office um, here when you're in the building. And we use Snagit to help us record that quick process just using Snagit video that we could then share out with staff so we didn't have to keep having that conversation and showing people how to do the same process over and over again, but also so that it's there and available in case the staff member forgets, they know right where to go so that they can immediately get a room scheduled and they're not waiting on us to get back to them on how to use that software. So it saved our team a lot of time and having to have the same conversation over and over, but it's really helped our staff be more effective and efficient as well because they can quickly go watch this quick video and then they have a room scheduled and they can go on with the rest of their day. So Jason, I think you're gonna show just quickly how to do that with Snagit. Yeah, so one of the things we wanna talk about uh, with Snagit, especially as we're doing this process is Snagit is really good at image capture and annotating those images, but it's really good at those quick videos. Those almost like a walk by desk conversations, right? I mean, do these videos have to be like super polished and perfect? No, in HR, we kind of, to it as a quick and dirty video like it just needs to be good enough i i don't i sometimes use ums and likes in my speech mm -hmm. i don't care about that in these videos because i'm just quickly walking them through a process so if i have a couple ums likes it's not that big of a deal yeah we've definitely adopted you might have heard this before anyone who's in the webinar um audience that do you need something perfect or do you need it by tuesday and most of the time we need it by tuesday and what's really helpful about creating the video that we're going to make here live with this uh, Zoom workplace reservation setup is um, that we want to make sure we use the rapport that we already have with our client with our clientele, which in this case is our friends and coworkers. If they don't know who I am, I forgive that. If they don't know who Amy or the <laughs> HR team is, uh, we've hiccuped somewhere. So let's take a, that example that Amy's showing with the brand new building. By the way, if you're ever in Mid Michigan and you get a chance to come to uh, East Lansing and you're interested, drive by our building. It is a gorgeous piece of artwork, in my opinion, and it's really cool inside. I work remote most of the time, and I look forward to the times of coming in, and I have to use this exact process to find a desk. So here I have the Zoom workplace reservation page up, and as you can see, there's actually little faces all throughout here, and that's text smithies that are there working in their location. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the Snagit capture window, which is right here. And for me, I always start with an all-in-one capture because I am super indecisive. I never decide whether or not I want to make an image or a video until it happens right away. So I click with the all-in-one on the capture button, and I am going to capture just this screen. I'm not worried about the web uh, address or anything like that or any of the tabs. I'm going to capture just this screen. And when I do this, I have the opportunity to decide what kind of image it's going to be or what kind of capture. I'm either going to do a still capture, a video, or a panoramic scrolling capture. And today we're going to do a video capture. So when I click on the video button, it gets me ready with the video recording um, capability here. And first thing I'm going to do is, actually, you know what I'm going to do first, Amy? I am going to turn off my webcam in Zoom so that I can use that functionality in Snagit because it's nice to have a personal touch of the face of the person who's talking to you. So we're gonna go ahead and restart that capture. We'll grab this section, we're gonna make it a video. And as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, there's actually a little, um, we call it a pip, picture in picture. And with Snagit, which is really cool, it used to be stuck in this form. 
right? This is what most videos look like. Uh, it's kind of boring and kind of old. And for this particular instance, it actually blocks part of the screen. Well, with Snagit, not only can I reposition by dragging my webcam around to one of the corners, I can actually decide in the webcam uh, capabilities in Snagit if I want it to be maybe a circle picture, maybe I want it to be just a, a square, or my personal favorite is the rounded square. It's a square, but it's a little softer because I don't want to be that rough guy. And then just like Amy said, there's some ums, there's some ahs. This recording, as Amy described, is down and dirty. I describe it as you get what you get, because as soon as we hit record, we're going to talk through the process. And then when we hit stop, the video is actually ready to go and share. So let's make a quick video. And for those who are watching on Zoom, just a quick uh, side note, uh, you'll see the my screen on the left-hand side, and you'll see Amy's webcam on the right. There is a divider line right there on your Zoom webinar interface, and you can click on that and drag it to the left or the right to give yourself more of the screen if possible, if you want to see a little bit more. So at this point, we're going to make a live video and record how to do the workplace reservation right in Snagit. Hey, everybody, this is Jason. Just a quick reminder on how easy it is to use the Zoom workspace reservations to find your desk when you're heading into the office. Here's how you do it. First, you're going to sign into the Zoom instance right on your computer. And then you're gonna pick which floor you wanna work on. Remember, we have two floors in our building. And the first thing you'll do is look around the uh, available spaces and anything that's green is an available desk to choose. So in my case, I see a coworker of mine, I think I wanna work next to them. And it looks like room 214 is available. I'll make sure the date that I wanna work is correct, which would be today. And I'm gonna tell the office, I'm gonna be in there from noon to four. I'm going to sneak out a little early. Shh, don't tell Amy. Oh, wait, she's on this. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and pick the section that we want. Uh, we said 2140. When we click on it, it tells me exactly who is reserving it. I make sure I can reserve it for myself because I'm not reserving for a team. This is just my desk for the workday. And then when I'm done, I click on the reserve button and it is mine. Once the system updates, it puts my face in that space. And now when I come in and log into the building, it's ready to go. No one else is going to take that space from me. And my coworkers who are also in the building know where to find me in case they want to take me out to lunch because a couple of them owe me lunch. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope this was useful. Take care. What's great about Snagit is then I hit stop. And this video, Amy, is, is ready to go, right? It's just there's no rendering. There's no processing. This is a quick video. So if something changes really quick in HR, or you have to get a note out about something that's happening that day or that morning, you can share this out with people right away. So the video is here inside of Snagit. And if we play it back. Hey, everybody, this is Jason. Just a quick reminder on how easy it is to use the Zoom workspace reservations to find your desk when you're heading into the office. Okay, so that's the video we just saw. Uh, we see that the video is a minute and 16 seconds long. That might be just fine. If for some reason, we, we definitely said this is a down and dirty, you get what you get video with Snagit. If there was some, I'll describe it as major error. I was talking and my phone rang and I felt like that was disturbing to the people watching the session or someone came in my room and was asking a question while I was recording live and ignored the, hey, I'm recording sign on my door. Pro tip, if you work around other people, grab yourself a sign that says, hey, I'm recording if you're making videos. Um, you can use the Snagit editor here to make small cuts to your um, video, but largely it's a one run through, ship it out to the world and share it, okay? What's really also great about using Snagit is, especially the brand new version of Snagit, Snagit 2023, is there's a button in the upper right-hand corner called Share Link. And this allows you to send this video right to Screencast, which you have free access to, uh, unlimited images, storage, and up to 25 videos. Uh, you can share this out right then. In fact, you can share it to uh, Screencast, and it is available for people to consume. You don't have to worry about storing it anywhere. And there's conversations built into the side panel. So if someone has a question, like if Amy made this video and you're like, hey, Amy, do we have to use the second floor? Can we use the first floor? Uh, you have those capabilities right inside of Snag in Screencast. So in fact, let's show you what that looks like. I copied that link. We'll go to screencast, the video's up, and there is the video we just created, and there's the ability for the conversations on the right. Best part is you don't have to have a screencast account to be able to watch the video and make comments. As a matter of fact, I will put the link to that video right here 
inside a chat. So you can all consume that if you want to. It's the ability for you to see what's going on and be able to have conversations around it. So I will Amy, say, you would, Jason, yeah. I'm going to interrupt you for a second because Dan said you sound like Casey Kasem and I 100% agree with her and my videos do not sound as awesome <laughs> as you sound in your videos. But I also just want to point out that you don't have to use screencast. You can save it in your the places you need to in your company. Um, with HR, lots of times we might be recording something kind of sensitive that we don't want an outside link for. And that is an option within Snagit as well. Absolutely. That's a great point. This is definitely the easiest way just to click the share link, but immediately to the right of that, there's a drop down menu that has lots of other destinations, right? If you live inside of Slack, which our team does as well, or you use Google Drive, or you want to save it locally to your desktop and put it up into Teams, or you want to put it on to SharePoint, all those capabilities are there and available to you as well. That's a great point, Amy. Thanks for giving us that. Now, pro tip. Thanks for the comment on the uh, sounding like Casey Kasem. If I could ever aspire to sound as good as Casey Kasem, I'll take that. Um, the difference is number of videos I've made versus maybe the number of videos Amy has made. It might be a little discrepancy, but we've both been doing this a long time. Uh, one thing you had mentioned earlier, Amy, before we go into the second set of things we're going to share today is um, being able to use parts of the video as images and mark them up and maybe obscure information that might be sensitive, right? So there's an opportunity to do that as well. Do you wanna talk about the value of taking uh, an image and also marking it up and then we can show what that looks like here inside of Snagit? Sure, sometimes we just, somebody's, we're in Slack or somewhere else and I don't need a video, I just need to quickly point out a couple of things. Within Snagit, you can take one of the images from the video and just add arrows to where you want them to point or something else that you're trying to make sure that they see on the screen. But the other piece of that I would call out, Jason, that I think is super important for HR and I know is a feature we use a lot in HR is the blur function. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of technology in HR. You know, we have Zoom, we have Slack, we have the Microsoft suite, the Google suite, but we also have employee engagement software. We have our HRIS where payroll and benefits are administrated, administered from. We also have our benefit administration sites for our staff to use. And we don't have a sandbox with accounts that we can, like dummy accounts we can use to train people. So we tend to use our own accounts for that. And we don't want employees to see our information and what's being shown there. So we'll actually use the blur function to blur those things out so that the staff can't see, but we can still show them where to point to. Gotcha. So let me take that idea and show everyone a, a tip or trick that I like to share with people, um, especially in HR, but anyone that's creating teaching uh, um, materials, right? Sharing knowledge, uh, SMEs, subject matter experts, they tend to want to make a video, which we just did real easily. And then they want to make a walkthrough guide or a document. My recommendation is if the document that you're going to show that has images from the video that you just made are the same thing as the video, there is a button right here called PNG, which creates a still image from that video. So if I were to go, let's say right, uh, let's say right here, I can click the PNG button. And just like that, that still image, that frame from the video is taken out and brought right here into Snagit. So I now have the editing capability of Snagit as an image editor right away as well. So Amy was talking about blurring sensitive information. Maybe I would go to the more dropdown and choose blur, and I want to obscure who's working in this part of the building, just because eh, no one else needs to worry about that. Maybe there's a special project that's going on or whatever it happens to be. I can choose a blurring style here uh, of this, I call it the smooth one or the pixelization one. Let's grab a pixelized one. To add a blur is simply clicking and dragging over that section of the image and it is obscured. Um, I could do the same thing with text, maybe over here. Maybe these are some sensitive settings. They're not, they're the generic Zoom webinar interface ones. Um, but just like that, I am able to obscure those sections of the image and blur them out. And as soon as I share this image with someone, whether it's through that share link or um, sharing it out as a JPEG or a PNG, those blurs are called flattened. They're built in as part of that image. So no one can extract the blur from it. It's already masked out. So all that information that was sensitive is able to be hidden as well. 
And of course I could, you know, rely on any of the other tools. Like maybe I'm using my pink snagged arrow to say, Hey, this is the office I think I'm going to work in. I might send this to my team and say, this is where I'm going to be. Do you guys want to grab the open spaces around me? You know, there's just lots of different ways I could utilize uh, Snagit images and videos. And the best part is I hate email. I really, I just not a fan. And if I can speak my messages in video form, because I like to talk or with a quick arrow or an image or a call out, I'm happy to do that every day of the week. So um, same way, Amy, if I want to, I could share it to a, a local um, local option if I wanted to, or I could use that share link just like I did before. Now I've got a URL that I can paste in Microsoft Teams or in an email, which I don't like, or Slack or whatever it ends up having to be. I have that link shared and available. And I will say we're giving examples specific to HR, but I work with a lot of groups outside of TechSmith too. And mm -hmm. I've used this just in things with those groups. And usually their minds are blown and they're like, how can I do that? I want to do that. That will help me. And they don't tend to be HR folks. They're in other parts of their organization, but the things we're teaching, anyone in the company can use that's trying to train someone on software or a quick process that they need to do, or you know, quickly talking through a benefit or something in payroll policies, all of that are things that our products can really help you do that aren't just an email that I don't know what, how other HR departments experience, but I know for my team, email tends to not be read a lot by our staff. Um, if we do a video or an image that we get across to people a lot more than a long email that they look at and are like, yeah, I'm not reading that and just move on. So it's really helped us also get the messages out to staff that we need to. Oh yeah. And very quickly, that's the thing that's helpful is if something changes right now within minutes that can be out to the staff, because like we said, it doesn't have to be this big formal, uh, Amy happens to be in the brand new studio at our brand new building right now. So her, she's way fancier looking than I'm a little jealous, can to admit it, a little jealous. Right. So, but getting the information out, especially with people you already have a rapport with, uh, your friends, your coworkers, it's great to be able to get that out quickly. Before we move on to the next section of today's webinar, Amy, I'm going to check and see if there's been any questions that have come in. Looks like we got one to start. Uh, Tyler asks, if only my training team has Snagit, which is an unfortunate thing, it'd be nice if everybody did for their capabilities, is Screencast available to the rest of the staff? So the answer to that question is, for the most part, yeah, they can consume things on Screencast without a problem. If you have a TechSmith ID, a TechSmith login, you have a Screencast account. So you may not necessarily, you get a, a TechSmith account when you purchase any of our softwares, Snagit, Audiate, any of the assets, Camtasia. Um, but anyone who shares the screencast, that can be consumed by anybody. It can be shared with the world. In fact, that's what we did with that uh, video I just did now. I'm guessing a lot of you didn't have screencast or didn't know you had screencast, but you could still get to it. As far as being able to upload to it, the account typically comes when you've purchased some sort of software or the software was purchased by your um, organization, your company. Yeah, Jason, I feel like we should highlight too, one of the other ways we use Snagit a lot internally is around asynchronous communication. So in July of last year, we actually did an experiment where we tried to do away with meetings as much as possible for the month of July. And mm. we were really trying to make sure that we had fewer, better meetings. Um, so, you know, lots of times I have an idea or something I'm thinking about around policies that I want to share with someone on my team and get feedback on. And I really started just quickly turning on Snagit, taking a video of myself, talking through the idea, sending it out to my team and having them give feedback to me. Um, that async white paper that we did, um, I think we're actually going to send that link out to you after the webinar and my team can probably put it in the chat for you as well. But in this world of flexible work, we're not all working at the same time or in the same place, but we still need to make sure information is getting to who it needs to when it needs to be there. And asynchronous communication is one of those ways to help support it. And one of the things that I just love about video is there's a lot less misinterpretation of what you're saying because they have the tone, they can see my face, they can read more of my body language, where you don't get any of that in an email. You just get the words that I'm using that could be misconstrued to mean something I didn't mean. So... I have really appreciated having 
the video um, during that experiment month when we weren't having a lot of meetings to ensure that I was being understood in the way that I meant and not maybe in the way I didn't mean. That is such a valid comment. We always go back to this same idea where if anyone's ever been in a, 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 a high school class, a college class, some sort of class where someone gave written feedback, if you got a paperback and in the margin it says, what were you thinking in red ink? Your brain is reading it in the most horrible language and the scared feeling when in fact the person might have been like, what were you thinking here? Could you explain what your, your approach was? It's the same way when I get a personal, it feels personalized when I get a video from HR, even if it's speaking to hundreds of us, it feels like it's to me because it's relevant to me. I can hear the voice. I can see the affect of the person's face. You're right. You're 100% right. Yeah. All right. So we'll keep looking for questions as we go through here as well. But I think it's time for us to go to the next thing we wanted to talk about today. Um, so we just talked about, in fact, Amy, let's let's cheat. You want to cheat a little bit and throw a sure. caution to the wind? <laughs> we decided that we were going to do the takeaways live during our session. So this is, we just talked about uh, documenting a process. So let's take, let's give our notes for what we learned from documenting process. We learned that it doesn't have to be perfect. Oh my gosh, I'm going to type live. That's a scary, scary thing. <laughs> uh, what else do we have as a takeaway, Amy? Just, just do it in one take. I mean, I, I find that the more takes I do, actually the worse it gets for me sometimes because I start getting more anxious where if I just know I'm going to do it in one take, I just do it and, you know, move on from there and don't sit there and just stress about it. There you go. Um, I always say use plain language. You don't have to use a, what do they say? You don't have to use a $20 word if a $2 word works just the same. Brevity is important. You know, don't say everything when you can say what you need to say. Um, I think and, the other uh, thing I would say, Jason, especially when you're highlighting technology, is just make sure you're calling out what you're clicking on or that you're clicking or that you're typing something. Because yeah, it might be on the screen, but sometimes seeing it and hearing it does help it click more. There you go. Call out. Call out what you're showing, clicking, moving. I agree with that one. And the last thing I want to make sure we share is that uh, uh, the more you share out, the more comfortable you will get. And I'll say this with video because people fearful about video. There's been a lot of comments like, well, is there a way to change your voice or change your appearance? Um, I say this with as much respect and love as I possibly can. That's what you look like. That's what you sound like. Get over it. Uh, especially if you're working with people on a daily basis, they know who you are. Be yourself. Because if you're not, they won't listen to the message that you're sharing, especially coming from HR. They're going to listen to the way that you shared it and read something into it that's probably not there, right? They just, you're trying to share relevant information. You want that point to get across, not how you're sounding or, or or the gleam in your eye or whatever it happens to be. Yeah, I tend to not, if I can help it, re-listen to something that I've recorded just because I do not like the sound of my voice. And like most people, I'm my own worst critic. So <laughs> it's better for me just to record and move on, share it with who I need to. And because nobody else is judging me the way I'm going to judge myself on what the end product was. There you go. So we're going to use Snagit to take an image of this documenting a process recap. I'm going to throw it up on screencast just like this. And now you all have my notes. So there you go. Perfect. All right, Amy, let's talk about the next thing. And the next thing is going to take a little bit more work from our end, but it's equally as important. And we were going to talk about communicating a policy change. And this is a real policy change that you talked about with us as tech smoothies. Yeah. So one of the things I'd say is, especially when it's around these policy changes, not everyone is always in the office at the same time. We have an all staff meeting Monday mornings that everyone tries to attend, but sometimes people are sick, they have a vacation, they're working a different schedule that day because of kid drop off that not everyone gets it. So these important communications that I'm trying to set, share out with staff, I like to do, and my team likes to do in a video so that not only is it shared at that Monday morning meeting, but it's also out there for anyone that was unable to attend it or needs that information again in the future. So specifically around the flexible work schedule or flexible work benefit, 
we do a lot of experimentation and iteration on that. We look at data. We ask for employees to share their thoughts and opinions about how things are going. And then we make adjustments along the way. So we actually just did a check-in on our flexible work benefit in December with our staff. Um, we actually didn't feel like we had enough data to make any changes, but we shared that data with our staff. And then we gave some more context around that and that nothing was changing. But we used video to do that again so that they could hear from me and understand from my tone what I was meaning, what I might be concerned about or what I was excited about and what I want them to remember about in the benefit. And then it's out there to share. When we have new hires come in, we're able to share it with them as well as part of onboarding. Um, so I don't know if you want to go ahead and work on that example, Jason. Yep. I'm also sharing that uh, flexible work environment, fatter future article uh, that you'll get in the email, but I also put it in there again, written by Emmy Musser, uh, our senior portfolio manager, also kind of in charge of screencasts and snag it and all the big, beautiful things that we're talking about today. So today we're going to make uh, Amy's message a reality around this policy change. And this was a real one. So what I'm going to do is use two tools. I'm going to use our Camtasia tool, which is a video editor and recorder and Audiate. And before I use Audiate, I do want to talk a little bit or have Amy talk a little bit more about the use of Audiate. Um, if you're not familiar with Audiate, Audiate is our uh, speech to text, audio recording, audio editing, ease of use, audio manipulator that allows you to, and there's so many things Audiate does, but what does it do for you and your team um, specifically, Amy? So I mentioned earlier that I tend to use a lot of ums and likes, especially when I'm recording. I don't like being on video. I especially don't like it when I'm recording and I know it's gonna get shared out with a lot of people like these ones are. And it's gonna be up on a big screen at our Monday morning meeting that I'll have to watch myself again. So the thing I absolutely love about Audiate is I can record and then quickly get rid of my ums, ahs, likes, deep breaths that I'm taking because I also tend to talk very fast and try to remember to take breaths in there. And Audiate quickly helps me do all of that before I pull it into Camtasia to attach it up to other visuals that I want to be in the video. And again, it still just needs to be just good enough, but this is more something that I know is going to live on in onboarding. So I do want it to be a little more polished than what I would share out with just doing showing someone how to do a Zoom reservation. That makes sense. So we're going to do that. We're going to pretend I'm part of HR. Side note, I'm not part of HR. <laughs> uh, and we're going to record uh, a script that Amy wrote into Audiate. We're going to do it live. In fact, I've got the script right here. I just want to show you that this is what I'm going to be reading. I've practiced it a few times, but we're going to record it live anyway. And I'm just going to put this on my other monitor and we're going to use Audiate to record my voice and then make any changes or corrections to that as needed because nobody's perfect and I need this by Tuesday. So let's start by using Audiate to record my voice. So first and foremost, we're going to hit the record button. Hey everyone, it's Jason in HR. I wanted to give you an update on our flexible work benefit. First, as a reminder, part of the benefit is work from elsewhere January and July. We want you to get a different perspective to bring back to work if you're able and interested. So start thinking about where you might want to work from next month and, nah, see, I screwed it up already. Let's try that again. So starting, <laughs> so start thinking about where you might want to work from next and reach out to HR if it's outside the listed guidelines. We reviewed the results of the recent return to work survey. And as you can see from the results, there was not enough of a change to draw any conclusions yet. We're going to continue with our current hybrid designations and we will reevaluate in six months. If you have any questions, reach out to us in the HR department on Slack. Thanks. So I'm gonna hit stop. And if you've never seen Audiate before, Audiate transcribed live what I was saying and, uh, yeah, errors and all. Hey everyone, it's Jason in HR. I wanted to give you an update on our flexible work benefit. I think that sounds pretty good, but I know there was a part I screwed up on. So I think it was, uh, so start thinking where you want, it's not this. So, so start thinking about where you might want to work from next month and 
Nah, see, I screwed it up already. Let's try that again. So starting... <sighs> so start... So, Amy, I screwed up the same line like twice, but then I got it right here. Here's the uh, the beauty of Audi8. I, I know how to edit a document. So I'm going to click and highlight the sections that I screwed up on. I'm literally going to hit delete. And it's like it never happened. Hey, everyone. It's Jason in HR. I wanted to give you an update on our flexible work benefit. First, as a reminder, part of the benefit is work from elsewhere January and July. We want you to get a different perspective to bring back to work if you're able and interested. So start thinking about where you might want to work from next and like it never happened, right? That is my so, favorite thing, Jason. <laughs> it is, it's, it's helpful. Um, if I haven't mentioned, I'm not a big script writer. I like to do things off the cuff, but when it's a message, it's gotta be very specific, right? Like this is anything you send from HR, even if it's human and connected, there's thought put behind it, right? There's a reason you chose certain words. There's a reason why the pacing has to be what it is. But Audi8 helps with that as well. If I had used any ums or ahs or obvious um, breaks in space and time, there would actually be an indicator up here in the upper left-hand corner where it would allow me to do suggested edits. I could delete all my hesitations. I could silence them all if I wanted to. So if I was like, um, uh, and then uh, we, um, which happens. Right. If you're talking and you're not used to that and you start basically rambling a little bit, Audiate can identify those things and quickly fix them. Now, there is pauses in here. There's optional edits. I typically don't like to do that. And I'll show you why in just a second, because we're going to use this audio for part of our Camtasia project. I can also know that um, not everyone has the opportunity to work in an environment where the audio is controlled. Right? I'm in my home office. I'm using a mic that I've got seven or eight years of experience with. I know how I sound. I can make adjustments in Audi8 as well. In the bottom right-hand corner, there is an audio effects tool that allows you to add or change different parts of your audio as well. I could remove background noise. I could remove um, any de-essing. So anything was a lot of S words or P words or anything like that. The plosives can be removed. That's where you pop the filter like that. Uh, you can do all those things in here as well. I happen to use Audiate enough that I actually saved a preset for myself. So if I click on that, it automatically adds the things that I know make me sound good. So if you have any questions, reach out to us in the HR department on Slack. It just kind of cleans it up for myself. It's the way I like it. But I have that audio now available, and I can do something pretty magical. In the upper right-hand corner, there is an export button, which allows me to not only export it to a local file, but I can send it to Camtasia because I have Camtasia installed. And that's what we're going to do first. We're going to export this right to the media bin of a brand new project inside of Camtasia that I've got opened. But of course, it's going to ask you to save it first. So we're going to save this just to my desktop. We'll say Amy HR script going to save that. It's going to put that script audio right inside of Camtasia. If you've used Camtasia before, which a lot of you said you had based on your registration. So thanks for letting us know. And it dropped it into Camtasia. And now I have this audio waiting in Camtasia. Now in that script that Amy wrote, Amy, you referenced some visual effects and you built me a PowerPoint presentation. Is that correct? I did. Okay, so with a PowerPoint presentation, there's lots of different things you can do. You could launch PowerPoint and record it with Camtasia. Uh, you could uh, grab still images from that PowerPoint presentation with Snagit and drop them in Camtasia. But we actually support importing PowerPoint presentations right into Camtasia. So that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to click on the plus button down here at the bottom of the media bin. So it's down here in the lower left-hand corner. I'm going to click on that and choose import media. I happen to have it right here in this folder with the HR webinar that we were talking about today. And it's going to bring in that entire PowerPoint presentation that Amy was uh, referring to the uh, images on right into the media bin as individual slides. So all I need to do is grab those slides and bring them down into Camtasia and start doing my edits. So I've got the, uh, let's see, the first slide here shows the flexible work benefit. You know, there's nothing else happening. There's no audio because I haven't added anything yet. And then all we need to do 
is bring in our audio by clicking and dragging it down here. And then we just need to space it out based on uh, how it fits with the slide deck. Now, if you've noticed when I showed that slide or that script earlier, I really broke up these lines and Amy tends to do this as well with uh, bullet points and different ways she, she writes to make sure that the audio that I'm recording matches up easily with something else. Even if it's not exact, I can manipulate it as much as I need inside of Camtasia. So let's play this back for just a second and see how it matches up initially. Hey everyone, it's Jason in HR. I wanted to give you an update on our flexible work benefit. First, as a reminder, okay, so right away, this whole phrasing should probably go with that first slide, right? Because it's the introduction to our presentation. So I'm gonna grab these slides right here, and I'm just gonna scooch them down the line. And because these are still images, I can just grab the end of one and extend it so that it matches up with the audio that I've got here. And I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to shrink this up and I'm going to really make the tracks visible so everybody can see where those line breaks are. So if we play that audio back again. Hey, everyone, it's Jason in HR. I wanted to give you an update on our flexible work benefit. First, and then when I say first, it's going to go to this next section here where we're going to talk about the work from elsewhere. And don't worry, we're going to add transitions here in just a second to kind of add another little piece of polish. As a reminder, part of the benefit is work from elsewhere, January and July. We want you to get a different perspective to bring back. Okay, different perspective. This is where the perspective part starts coming in with this slide. So all I would do is probably extend the last one and just basically assemble my presentation based on that. We're thinking about where you might want to work from. I think this is the same slide as well. Next, and reach out to HR if it's outside the listed guidelines. And then we go and grab uh, the other slides here in our presentation. Because Amy start, or in this, Amy, me, when I start talking about the official survey results, we reviewed the results of the recent return to work survey. And as you can see, and as you can see, Time to bring in the actual results. From the results, there was not enough of a change to draw any conclusions yet. We're going to continue with our current. So this one looks like I accidentally, when I was loading the PowerPoint earlier, I shifted my text. I can fix that later. Current hybrid designations, and we will reevaluate in six months. If you have any questions, reach out to us in the HR department on Slack. And this is where Amy with Sparty here, very apropos for what's happening in our world right now to know that we are connected very much to the Michigan State University. We are on their campus. Uh, we are employ a lot of Spartans. We are, a lot of us are Spartans either by degree or by heart. Um, so that's a great inclusion in there. But all we did was take the recording we just made, make small adjustments to the timing of the PowerPoint presentation. And we now have a video. What's really fun is I can still lean on Camtasia and Amy and her team might do this just to add a little polish. Like maybe I wanna select everything on this track and I wanna add a transition. Amy, I have a lot of transitions in my favorites. Do you have any that are some of your favorites that you would like added or should we just pick one from this grouping? I mean, I tend to use fade in and out a lot, but mm -hmm. I like them all. <laughs> Fair. I'm going to use the... Uh, uh, I don't want prism. I want paint arcs. I'm going to add paint arcs here and I'm going to add a paint arc at the beginning to come in and I'll make sure one's at the end. So now with a couple of seconds worth of work, we have a video that's ready to share with the company. Hey everyone, it's Jason in HR. I wanted to give you an update on our flexible work benefit. First, as a reminder, we won't watch the whole video because we just made it. And I was just thinking, how hilarious would this be if we actually sent this out to the company and people are like, what? Jason, HR? Um, well, maybe it wouldn't be that far-fetched. Anyway, so the idea is that I was able to take two of our existing tools, Audiate and, and Camtasia, and just like any member of our HR team could quickly make a video that sounds really good, looks really good, and can be shared out with the company in a matter of minutes if you're comfortable with the editing process. And this isn't anything fancy. Amy, did I do anything that's outside of the scope of what you and your team might do inside of Camtasia? Because there's a lot you can do, but let's remember, do we need it perfect or do we need it by Tuesday? 
Nope. This is exactly what I would do. I try not to put too much in um, mm-hmm. just because, again, I'm, I want to convey the information. I want staff to hear from me how I, you know, that I care mm-hmm. that I'm how I'm trying to convey the information. But also, I'm not trying to make it be perfect or TV production quality. I I don't have that much time to spend on things. And honestly, Audiate has saved me so much time in making videos. I love Mm -hmm. Camtasia, but for me, sometimes the audio piece wasn't always the easiest because I am so picky about my ums and ahs. But now with Audiate, within an hour, I can have a video like this created and done and I move on. And I do want to say the Amy said within an hour, this whole video is 44 seconds long, right? Is an hour amount of time a reasonable amount of time to spend on a video like this? I would say, yeah, it is because... You're not doing anything more than you would want to. You're getting the communication out. You've already done all the research end of it. You've already assembled the PowerPoint presentation. You've written the script to record your voice. You can get this all done in a really short amount of time. And then when this video is done, just like we did in Snagit, in that upper right-hand corner, there is an export button. If you're on the newer versions of Camtasia, if you click that screencast button, it's going to go to that same screencast instance, which allows you to have conversations around it, which is what um, HR might want. Or more than likely, they would put it uh, somewhere where we could watch it, like any of our other properties. They might even put it locally up on the um, on the HR page on the SharePoint site, right? Especially if it's something that has uh, what we describe as evergreen uh, properties, meaning it's not going to go away for a couple months. It might be good for six months or seven months or eight months. That's why video is great. You can rewatch it, pause it, rewind it as many times as you need. Watch it in double uh, speed, <laughs> watch which it. we have some no. staff do. <laughs> We, that's not, that's not untrue. Sometimes if we miss the Monday, we have a Monday morning meeting every week. Um, sometimes if we miss it, we watch it at double speed and we, or we move around to the things that are super relevant to our team or our projects as well. Um, before we get into any technical questions, because I know there's a couple that have come through. There was a question that came in from Brandon and Amy, and this is for you most likely in your team. Are there certain things that you wouldn't send via video? Would there be something known as like video overload if you send out too many videos? And this is actually a really great question. It is a great question. Um, Honestly, anything that's got any kind of personally identified PII information, I wouldn't send in a video just because we like to be very careful about confidential information. So that's one instance where I would probably get on a call with somebody and just screen share if need be. Um, with these, with this video that we're doing with Camtasia, this isn't something that I do every day. I probably do a couple of these a month. So I am very careful about when I use video because I do want to ensure that our staff is watching them. So I make sure it's important things that I really need them to pay attention to and watch. Um, but with how I use Snagit video, again, they're quick and dirty and I'm just quickly trying to convey some information. Usually it's in response to something that somebody's asked me about or asked me to show them how, and then I have it to use with other people. But specifically with these Camtasia, I am very careful about, just like I'm careful about when I send all staff emails because I don't want to overload people. It's the same Mm -hmm. with video for me. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, we're a company that makes video software, right? And even we take breaks from video because there's so many different ways of communicating, whether it's a quick note in Slack, an image shot with Snagit. Sometimes it's a quick video. Sometimes it's walking down the hall and be like, hey, Amy, you got a second. It's however you find uh, the best way to communicate with your coworkers, especially for HR. Sometimes that face-to-face time is important. Uh, maybe you go grab a cup of coffee. Maybe you take a walk. Maybe it's a, it's a private um, conversation that needs to be had and you go to a a more secluded private area where you can have those conversations that are a little bit more sensitive, right? Yep. Cool. Uh, Cohen asked a really great question. Do you email and share links for everything or is there a place that tech smithies go for information, like where you source all of your HR information? So in HR, we actually have a SharePoint site that we use that we post a lot of links to information in specific spots. Um, And then we'll just link to those spots on SharePoint where they are in Slack or email or other messaging that we're doing. We'll even put links sometimes in videos to send people out to. Great Perfect. question. Yeah. Uh, so here's a question I'm gonna ask you because I know, I know the answer to it, but I wanna see what you say. Um, Jillian asked, can you bring in the closed captions from Audiate 
into Camtasia? I believe that is yes, correct? That is yes. Yeah. So that's a great part about doing the work inside of Audi and and making those corrections, you know, deleting the things you didn't mean to say, or as Amy said, silencing ums and ahs and stuff like that. You can go to the file menu and choose um, to export the script. And when you do that, one of the options as a script, uh, you got your text file, which is just a regular text document, but then you have an SRT file, which is a subtitle rip. That allows you to take that SRT and import that directly into um, SRT for Amy uh, into Camtasia. And then you can go ahead and um, line those things up. We don't have time to go over the entirety of captioning inside of uh, Camtasia in this session. We have a lot of helpful things. As a matter of fact, if at any point you're curious about how to use the products, especially in Camtasia, if you go to the help menu and then choose... um, video tutorials right here at the top. It'll take you to our tutorial page, which opened up on the other screen. And we have a full selection of tutorials uh, searchable here at the top to help you through almost everything you could need inside of both Camtasia. We also have it for Snagit. We also have it for Audiate. All those tutorials are available here uh, on our site. And because you came to a webinar, there is a whole slew of upcoming webinars as well. In fact, here's the one you're attending right now. This is the brand new webinar page. Just going to put that out there. Uh, You can search for what you're looking for based on products and webinar type here as well. I'd also just give a shout out to our support team. They are Mm -hmm. available on chat and through tickets and they're absolutely amazing and super helpful. I use them myself when I get a little lost or I'm running across the problem, and they really are a lot of help. Yes, absolutely. Tremendous. We could not do our jobs without that team. They are amazing people. Uh, Tracy asked a quick question because they uh, they saw that we made a PowerPoint. You made it in PowerPoint itself. Can you also import Google Slides directly without converting it into PowerPoint? So you can import things from Google Drive. But right now, the only thing that is supported in Camtasia is those PowerPoint extensions. So you would need to download it as a PowerPoint presentation, which is free and easy to do inside of Google Slides itself. You would just go to File, uh, Export, or Download and choose the PowerPoint uh, option as well. All right. Uh, Deborah asked a question. Uh, Amy, we we shot a video earlier in Snagit, and there was a picture-in-picture, right, that pip in the bottom right-hand corner. For this video in Camtasia, we've got audio, we've got a PowerPoint would you typically use um, Camtasia to do a video recording as well, a screen recording with your webcam? Is there something you would layer on in addition or does it kind of just depend on the video? It kind of depends on the video. Sometimes I would start out doing a picture in picture video with the audio there and then do mm-hmm. the rest of the video, audio and audio. Um, just for this one, for time's sake, I just did the whole thing in audio, but that's fair. And yeah, you can at any point hit the record button and just record a webcam if you wanted to do that separately. You could record a full screen webcam in Snagit. And one of the options, you might not be aware of this, but inside of Snagit's editor itself, um, if I shoot a video like the one we shot earlier here, one of the export options is to Camtasia. So you could send this video right into Camtasia and add music or transitions or any call outs or effects as well. So you can actually take that down and dirty quick video that you needed to get out right now and then maybe polish it a little bit more for that evergreen approach later on. It just depends on the video. It's it's such a cop-out answer, but when people ask about how to use videos and when we would use videos in certain ways, the ultimate answer we give, well, it depends. And that's a true answer. And it sounds like such a cop-out, but it's real because we have so many different ways of using video as well. All right, Amy, I'm just checking to see if there's any other questions that have come in. Our team has been awesome about answering questions. Uh, There's been a couple hundred of you here today, so we appreciate you asking those questions. But it looks like that's where we're at. So I think unless any other questions come in while I'm doing this wrap-up, Amy, let's go and do our takeaways for the second part of this presentation, because we promised ourselves this is what we would do. So We already did the recap of documenting a process. So let's do a recap of communicating a policy change. So uh, first takeaway. I mean, the biggest thing for me is know what you're wanting to talk about, create an outline or a script just to help keep you on track to try to limit those ums and ahs as much as possible. So you're not trying to think 
while you're ha possibly having the video camera on you. I know that just adds stress for me. Also, it just needs to be good enough. So, yep, we're trying to create a little bit more polished video here with Camtasia and Audiate, but it still does not, for the sakes of sharing internally, for me, need to be TV production quality. I'm going for an Emmy kind of situation. So true, right? The joke we always say is none of us are Steven Spielberg. And if Steven Spielberg happens to be in the audience, hi, big fan, appreciate you taking your time. <laughs> none of us are, even, even the people at TechSmith that are of that ilk, of that caliber, will tell you that uh, it's still, it, you never know when a video is done. It's done when it's ready to be shared. It isn't, there's so many little nuances. Like in Audiate, could I tweak every little aspect of my voice? I sure could. And then nothing would ever get done. Same with those videos. So that that's a good, good, good point. Um, and I will say make more videos, no matter what, because you'll get more comfortable with the process. They're received well. People can consume them when they're ready to. It's really, really helpful. So I would also really say, Jason, just to build yeah. in natural pauses. That's something that I really was horrible about. I don't know if you remember some of the videos I've shared out. But I tend to be a fast speaker to begin with, and it was clear I was not taking a breath through the entire video. And I've learned to start building in actual breathing breaks for myself, just because it makes it easier for those listening to the video to follow what I'm saying, because you want to make sure you're clear and are using words that your audience will understand so that they get the information you're trying to convey to them. There you go. And I will break my own cardinal rule of saying it's okay to practice. It's all right to to go run do a run through. I mean, we've we've admittedly done a run through of this particular session several times over the last couple of weeks. So in the chat, I'm pasting our note sheet for communicating a policy change. So that's where we get there. And that's where we're gonna say, my gosh, we're at our time already. Can you believe it? See, time flies when you're having fun and making videos about HR policies and procedural changes. And they're they're real, right? Nothing we did here was made up. Everything that we shared is real. Um, you will get a link, of course, to that document about uh, a fatter future from Emmy. We're, we're proud of that document. And it's really, really helpful. Um, this is where I say, reminder, you will get a link to the recording in your email. You will get also some other links to the handout for Camtasia. Uh, if you are stuck and you want to talk to the, one of the aforementioned support agents that Amy was referencing, support.techsmith.com. Uh, they are awesome. They will do their best to help you out. Um, you can always reach out to us and we'll answer the questions to the best of the ability. And last but not least, before I say goodbye to everybody, when you close the webinar, you are going to get prompted to take a survey. I promise it's short, four questions, one minute. It's how we get better at these webinars. It's, did we do a good job? Was this what you expected? In fact, we take ideas from those sessions and those webinar uh, survey results and build sessions like the one you're seeing today with Amy and I and the team. We want to make sure that we're delivering content and delivering things that are helpful to you. Um, so with that, I'm going to say thank you to our team, Amy, and everybody that's helped us out. That includes, and I close that, it's uh, uh, Brianna, Carson, Jill, Caitlin, Luke, Robert, and Emmy was on there. I'll say my goodbyes, but Amy, would you like to send us out? Yeah, I'd also say just anyone that's interested, I am out on LinkedIn and feel free to connect with me. I love talking to more people in the HR profession and I appreciate you taking an hour out of your day to spend with us. I know all of our time is precious and we appreciate that you chose some of it to spend with us. Thank you. And thank you to Amy for taking the time. We appreciate it. I hope everybody has a wonderful balance to your day. Hope to see you in another webinar coming up soon. Take care. Bye everyone. everyone.